Hey guys, it's Tiffany. Today, I'm gonna talk to you about the different types of numbers. Types of numbers. At this level in math, there's five main types of numbers that I wanna make sure that you understand. The first type of number is a natural number, and we call it a natural number because it's literally the numbers that you learn when you're a baby to count. So they're the counting numbers. So they're one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. All of those numbers are natural numbers. They're the counting numbers. Whole numbers are the same thing except with zero added. So they're the counting numbers plus zero. There's definitely a difference between natural numbers and whole numbers because when you learn to count, you don't start with the number zero. A mom doesn't teach her baby, hey, let's learn our numbers. Let's start with zero and then one and then two. No, typically you don't learn zero as a kid. You learn zero when you get a little older. Okay, so whole numbers are the counting numbers plus zero. And there's so many different types of numbers. Sometimes I forget you know or you know I know students forget so I had to learn little tricks to help me remember and a, a trick that I um, use now to remember the type of number that includes zero is by remembering the word whole has an O in the middle which looks like a zero and that just reminds me that the difference between a natural number and a whole number is the whole numbers have the zero the next type of number is an integer. An integer are all the counting numbers, the number zero, and negative counting numbers. So basically all of those natural numbers that you learn to count with, one, two, three, four, five, all of those in their negative version, which is going to be negative one, negative two, negative three, num negative four, negative five, all of those numbers in a negative form, the number zero, and the regular counting number. So here's some examples negative 3, negative 2, negative 1, 0, 1, 2, and 3. And these numbers go on forever because just like numbers are infinite and never end um, when you're dealing with positive numbers, negative numbers are the same way. So these go infinitely out in the negative direction and get smaller, smaller, smaller. Rational numbers are numbers that can be written as a fraction. So all integers, or all the numbers that we've talked about so far, are rational numbers because they can be written as a fraction. If you remember any number, any whole number, like let's say I have the number 3. If I put the number 3 um, over a 1, that is a fraction. And that fraction is equivalent to the number 3. Any number, any... uh integer that has a 1 for a denominator is a rational number. Some other examples are actual fractions themselves like 3 fourths and then numbers that are written in a decimal form are also rational numbers as long as they can be written as a fraction. So 3 repeating is a rational number because 3 repeating can be written like one-third which is a fraction. Irrational numbers are numbers that cannot be written as a fraction like pi. Remember pi is 3.1415 and so on and so on and so on. Pi never ends um, when you're talking about it in a decimal form. Because it doesn't end in a decimal form it cannot be written as a fraction because it can't be written as a fraction, it's irrational. Another example of an irrational number is the square root of 2. Um, I'm not going to get too deep into square roots right here, but if you were to try to calculate the square root of 2 in a calculator, you're going to get a long decimal that does not end. Well, I mean, it will end in your calculator because your calculator only has so many digit places that it can hold a value. So if you were to work it out by hand, it would never end. And because of that, the square root of 2 is irrational. One more thing I want to point out is a number can never be both rational and irrational at the same time. That's impossible. <laughs>
Hope that cleared up some things about types of numbers. Thanks for watching.